take snow sheep as a trophy is not an easy task, even for an experienced hunter. The natural habitat of this unique, incredibly tough animal is dispersed over the vast territory of the eastern Russia. It is quite remote from the civilization. In this expedition, mountain hunter Sergei Mazurkevich has set an ambitious goal to take two trophies at once, the Kalima snow sheep in the Magadan region and the Ahotsk snow sheep in the Khabarovsk territory. He has to travel six and a half thousand kilometers and spend about 20 hours in flight in order to get to the hunting area. No roads lead there. You can't get there by boat. It is possible to reach these untouched places only by helicopter. 12 days of searching, more than 200 kilometers traveled on foot, and the total rise equal to the height of two Elbrus Mountains. It is literally wild, and for the moment, the most difficult hunt. Mountain hunt for the Kalima snow sheep. Our next expedition is to the edge of our country, to the east. In the east of our country, six positions are of special interest to mountain hunters. These are the Yakut snow sheep, the Ahotsk, the Kalimas, the Kamchatkas, Karyak snow sheep, and the Chukotka snow sheep. The Kamchatka sheep was taken last year. In this expedition, our goal is to take the Ahotsk and the Kalima sheep. We've been traveling 16 hours already since we loaded our luggage into cars and set off to the airport of Ekaterinburg. It was a sleepless night. We managed to sleep for two or three hours, but nevertheless, we feel quite optimistic. That's it. We are invited to board the plane to Ahotsk. The habitat of the Kalima sheep is in the Magadan region. Then a helicopter will fly and take us to the Khabarovsk territory, where we will hunt for the Ahotsk sheep. The hunt will be on foot, at an estimated altitude of about 2,000 meters. The organizers promise an average daytime temperature of 10 degrees. The temperature is expected to drop to zero at night. Eight days are planned for hunting, excluding transfer. Upon arrival at the airport of Ahotsk, Alexander Malkov, the organizer of this hunt, meets Sergei. He immediately reports unpleasant news. We decided to postpone the helicopter flight until tomorrow, due to extreme weather conditions. Today we will spend the night in Ahotsk and wait for the permission to fly. Hello! The guests have arrived. These are our apartments. We have arrived at a local hotel. It's the dormitory of the Kolkhoz named after Lenin. Here we will spend the night. Well, it's fine. Ahotsk is a small working village on the shores of the Ahotsk Sea. With a population of three and a half thousand people, Ahotsk is considered the cradle of the Russian Navy in the Pacific Ocean. It is one of the oldest Russian settlements in the Far East. In Soviet times, the city forming enterprises here were a large fish processing plant and a shipyard, the work of which began to decrease in the 90s. The deterioration of the economic situation led to the fact that the population began to leave the village and the seaport of Ahotsk lost its former importance. On the beach of the Ahotsk Sea, we can see only the swimming seals. Non-bathing season! Well, the locals don't bathe at all here. According to Alexander, the majority of them cannot swim at all. Well, the water feels like 12 degrees. In fact, this is the Pacific Ocean. You could have tried to swim if it were not raining. The next morning, the permission to take off was received. And Sergei arrived at the helipad. Also, Vitaly Yurevich, Sergei Leonidovich. Here he met the captain of the aircraft and the rest of the hunting team. Dmitry Belolubsky, 
35 years old, a junior huntsman. Alexander Batitsky, 33 years old, a chef. Nikolai Viznasov, 48 years old, a senior huntsman. Alexander Malkov, 52 years old, the organizer of the hunt. We will fly on a Mi-8 helicopter. It's the most widespread helicopter in the world, created in the 60s. And it's also the most popular helicopter, because it's simple and reliable. Loading is over. Let's take off. According to Alexander, the total load of the helicopter, including passengers, is 1 ton 300 kilograms. It took one hour to prepare the helicopter for departure. Good morning, everyone from the crew. Please don't smoke and don't drink alcohol in flight. Don't go out straight after landing without my permission. Let's go to the Kulu while the weather is fine. The team went by helicopter to the first base camp on the Kulu River in the Magadan region. Since ancient times, eight indigenous peoples have been living on the territory of the Habarovsk territory of the Russian Far East. These are Nanes, Negados, Nivks, Oruchi, Udege, Olchi, Ivanks, and Ivans. The worldview of the indigenous people is formed by the most ancient beliefs. Their distinctive culture is more than 5,000 years old. The cult of nature and shamanism are the most significant for them. It was believed that man comes from the beast, that animals in the taiga hear and understand everything, that the beast can be reborn after death if its bones and skull are preserved that forest animals have their own master spirits who must be placated from time to time for the hunt to be successful. Just An hour and 30 minutes later, we are in the habitat of the Kalima sheep, our first aim in this expedition. Great, thank you! The sheep are said to have been seen. What is that, over there? Between the trees? On the top? Over there? It's moving on the slope. Here they are. They have binoculars. The binoculars are in the bag. If they are right, let's shoot. Let's shoot and fly back. Let's watch. I think there is some movement. Snow sheep or bighorn sheep is a large, sturdy sheep with short, muscular legs. Its head is adorned with massive, curling horns that can reach lengths of up to 110 centimeters. Despite their massive body structure, sheep have the ability to deftly move along rocky terrain and jump from a height of up to 3 meters. In the latest report of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the snow sheep is classified as a species under the least threat of extinction. Taking out their binoculars, the team studied the surrounding slopes closely. As it turned out, lonely growing trees were wrongly taken for the sheep. Have a good hunt. Good luck. Wait for your call. Thank you. Within an hour and a half, a full base camp was assembled. Here, according to the plan, the team will hunt for three days. The main target is an adult male Kaluma snow sheep. For this hunt, Sergei took a new carbine that had not yet been tested in the mountains. In order to be sure of the shot, Sergei decides to test it at a distance of 300 meters. So today is the first day of the hunt. It's 3 p.m. We set a tent camp and decided to scout the nearest slopes. The three of us, including Nikolai, set off. Dmitry went in a different direction. Well, let's go around and examine everything. If everything goes according to plan, the team will relocate to the Kuktui River, which is 40 minutes away by helicopter. 
A new camp will be organized there, and the hunt will continue for the Ahotsk snow sheep. According to the organizer, in this season, hunting in these parts has not been carried out yet, and the hunter will have enough time to choose a worthy trophy, as well as observe and study the habits of snow sheep. The ascent was 200 meters. Our camp is below. Our tents are over there. You can see the green ones. Mine is not visible. It's behind the hill. That is our restaurant. It serves breakfast and dinner. And I hope maybe a lunch sometimes. Today is the first day of the hunt. Quite cloudy. No sheep have yet been seen. Is it you on the ridge of the mountain? Yes. From the side of the valley. For now, we'll follow the same way. The shortest for today. Exploration route. The terrain in these parts is mainly low hills covered with vegetation as soft as a carpet. Crossing them one after another in a day, you can walk tens of kilometers in search of the desired trophy. From time to time, you have to cross more serious mountains, the main difficulty of which are constantly falling loose stones. These are the first signs of the sheep's activity, evidence of their presence here. This is definitely good news. This is the first time I took this carbine with me. The butt is quite comfortable. You can sit, look around and relax for a minute, without removing the frame. Ram have not been seen yet. Well, we didn't expect an easy hunt. A shot. I didn't understand that. What was that shot? Have you heard? It was a shot, wasn't it? On the other side. This means we're not alone here. A sheep. Someone ate it. Not a big one, rather small, a lamb. But this is the second evidence for today. These bones are polished by both time and predator. Quite an unpleasant descent. It's easier to ascend than to descend. Well, today we have exercised a bit, climbed 522 meters, and accordingly descended the same. No sheep has been seen, but the signs of its presence in these parts are found. As a result, now we know that there are no sheep over there, but we still have some hope in that direction. That's why tomorrow we wake up very early in the morning and set off in different direction where a helicopter flew. If we don't take, or at least detect it tomorrow, then most likely we will have to go somewhere further with the light cap. We have climbed 530 meters and in total have walked 8,800 meters. Have you heard the shot? Is someone poaching? It came from the right, from here. It seems like a carbine shot made from the camp. It was definitely a shot. I can recognize this sort of things. Three or four kilometers in the mountains. Well, theoretically, nobody should be here. According to the organizer, the nearest settlement is about 300 kilometers away. And it is very unlikely to meet any hunters or shepherds here. Probably a local aborigine is getting meat. So, nothing can be done about it.
Today is the second day of hunting. It's 6.30 in the morning. Nikolai, our cameraman Alexander and me set off in the opposite direction to yesterday and we hope to find our Kalima snowshoe. Having occupied one of the highest positions, Sergei and Nikolai began exploring the surroundings in search of a ram. After about two hours of observation, the first result appeared. Nikolai has discovered a group of sheep at an altitude of 3,400 meters. On the other side, across the valley. Wow! How many are there? Too many, not clear. Some of them are white, maybe deer. I'll have a look. These are sheep. There are white sheep. Well, not albinos, just the color itself, dark colored, white. There is evaporation, visibility is poor. We'll come closer at least two or one and a half kilometers to understand if there is a trophy ram. One of the unobvious difficulties of hunting in these parts is the large number of blood-sucking insects. Due to high humidity, the tundra is the most favorable habitat for various midges. These annoying insects drink much blood not only to an adventurous hunter, but also to sheep, forcing them to graze only in the morning and in the evening and in the afternoon to climb high on the ridges which blown by the wind. This hunt takes place at the end of summer, when the total number of midges decreases, the beginning of autumn is the calmest season in the life of sheep. Look there, over the white spot. The disappearance of the midges allows bighorn sheep to form herds of 20 to 30 heads and graze in pastures rich in forage. All of them are not trophy males. Base. There are all small sheep, as we get a closer look. Frankly speaking, we are a bit tired. It's hot and the sun shines, but the cold breeze is refreshing. Dmitri, the second huntsman, that day simultaneously explored other mountains. On the radio, he reported that before sunset, he was able to find one wandering herd. The only problem was that the setting sun and the great distance would not allow him to see their trophic qualities, but he assured there were at least two large bighorns in the herd. The truthfulness of this was to be ascertained the next day. The next morning, the whole team set off to the area where Dmitri saw a group of sheep. The distance was about 6 kilometers and included the most difficult rocky climb of 700 meters. A strong wind was blowing at the top. So they started to feed and came over there in a relaxed mode. I didn't follow them there as the wind was blowing in their direction. Two hours of observation led nowhere. After having a snack, the hunters kept on walking along the ridge, examining the surrounding slopes. Minutes turned into hours. Moving slowly towards the base, the team thoroughly surveyed the surrounding area. No sheep footprints, no other signs of life. And then finally, one of the huntsmen, looking through a pipe, saw a grazing herd. They are not close, they're all far away. Despite the fact that it was not possible to assess the trophy qualities at such a distance, it was decided to move towards the discovered sheep. Less than three hours were left before the sunset. Well, in an hour and a half, we ran three and a half kilometers. It's quite hard, constant descents and descents. The huntsmen were separated. Nikolai occupied a high position and directed Dmitry and Sergei over the radio. 
Only he, Nikolai, constantly kept the big horns in sight, setting sun and constantly breaking radio communications made the hunters move literally blindly. Finally, 20 minutes later, sheep were found crossing the ridge in a completely different direction. Later, Nikolai explained how he saw what was happening from the side. It turns out that when Dmitry and Sergei were climbing, they frightened off a lonely grazing female sheep, and it running away took the others with her. The team, exhausted and drenched in the rain, returned to camp only at about midnight. Having traveled more than 30 kilometers, they returned with nothing. Late return and the morning rain made adjustments to the plans for the day. The awakening was postponed from 5 to 9 in the morning. While the team was getting ready for the next raid, a young reindeer watched them from the mountain. As it turned out, it was not the only morning guest. A small group of snow sheep fearlessly grazed not far from the camp. A strange group of snow sheep. If there is a trophy one, then it's luck. We had a good night's sleep, walked 700 meters. Of course, there was no trophy sheep in the group. It all consisted entirely of female sheep and lambs. It rained at night, but the footprint is rather clear. It belongs to the female sheep and the lambs we have just seen. A very interesting mountain, totally made of small stones. Looks like artificial, but it's natural. The nature of the far east of our country is really unique. Formidable Rocky Mountain ranges here give way to the tranquility of green plains. The representatives of the animal world surprise with their resilience and ability to adapt to the difficult conditions of the local climate. The winter period in the Magadan region lasts up to seven and a half months. In winter, in some mountainous areas, the temperature drops to minus 50 degrees and many rivers freeze to the ground. But flora and fauna are reborn incredibly quickly when the long-awaited summer comes in June. In this short period, the natural beauty of the Magadan region amazes. The slopes are covered with a variety of flowers and wild berries. In the forests and on the slopes of the mountains, you can observe the most diverse representatives of the animal kingdom. On this day, the hunters returned to the camp again with nothing. Some reindeer were waiting for them near the camp. Unlike the morning one, these seven deer were on a leash. As it turned out, two reindeer breeders passing by saw the camp and decided to stop by and find out how things were going. Chef Alexander met them hospitably. He invited them to warm up and have a snack. They said that they were going to a neighboring settlement for cigarettes. They had been going for a long time and that it was still a long way, about 150 kilometers. Therefore, in order not to abuse the hospitality, they, having eaten quickly, jumped on the deer and went into the tundra for cigarettes. On the fifth day of hunting, Sergei and Dmitri, as usual, were examining the surrounding slopes in search of the desired trophy when Nikolai contacted them by radio. Listening, he reported that he was observing an interesting group of bighorns. To join Nikolai, it was necessary to descend, climb, and walk a couple of kilometers along the ridge. In total, we just walked around the camp about 80 kilometers. We examined everything here in five days. On every mountain, you can probably see only our footprints, everywhere. We'll get there in two hours. Without wasting extra minutes thinking, the hunters set off. We're in about three and a half kilometers. Dima, where are they? They are under the Red Mountain. Nikolai has been watching the rams for about two hours already. Did you take a telescope? I didn't take it. Not having telescope 
Sergei studied a comely grazing herd in a 35-fold optical sight. Finally, it was a group in which males were present. Small, 7- to 8-year-old male sheep with not the most prominent horns. Every day the level of requirements for trophy qualities falls. If there is a 5- or a 6-year-old male sheep, we'll take it. The team started planning the approach. Let's climb on this hill and shoot from it. Going down the dangerous route, the team lost too much time. Having already finished grazing, the herd apparently went up to an overnight stay. Higher on the ridge. Where? Here they are. I'm getting ready. That's not a moment to lose. Suddenly, a little to the left and lower, about 500 meters from the main group, Nikolai saw a lonely grazing ram. Its trophic qualities were much higher. Looks like he's spotted us. It's running. It's getting away. 500 meters. I should. Yes! I heard a distinctive bop from the hip. Finally, the Kalima snow sheep is taken. It's quite small, but my fellow hunters will forgive me. It's already 90 kilometers we have walked for this ram. The strength and endurance of the bighorn sheep is amazing. Hitting the target, the bullet did not kill the beast. It ran a few meters and stopped. For a while, it stood stubbornly. Well, it's lying down. And then, he sank to the ground and bowed his head. He has a lot of strength. The sun has been shining for five days. We've been climbing rocks in this heat. I thought the Caucasus Mountains were heavy. But this is the hardest hunt ever. Let's go and find it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years old. Great. So, the Kalima snow sheep was found and taken. Now it's time to call a helicopter and relocate to the Habarovsk territory, where Sergei and his team will get to the Ahotsk snow sheep. It won't be easy, but don't rush it. We'll show you everything in the next film. Well, Siroga, what's that got to do with me? I think something went wrong. <laughs>